Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and uh, this is the last recipe of the year on the French Cooking Academy. And to finish off, we're going to do a pre-Christmas special with a very specific piece of meat. Try to guess what that is, where it is actually roux deer, a venison meat, a very gamey meat. So it's going to be like back from the hunting type of recipe. Of course, we don't hunt nowadays, but we're going to try to recreate and that scene, a bit from the Middle Ages, when uh, the lords were, uh, you know, they were hunting and they have the deer, they bring the meat, and in the kitchen, we're going to create the roux deer roast served with the sauce Grand Veneur, which is a peppery brown sauce uh, that is mixed with some uh, cranberry marmalade. Surprisingly, this sauce is a very acidic sauce. It's got vinegar in the marinade, you've got red wine, and there is pepper, and what we're going to get is a reduction mixed with some stock plus some sweetness from the cranberries. So we're going to get some kind of sweet and sour, old-fashioned, peppery types of sauce with a very strong meat. Now, Rudy is very gamey, is very strong. So to have all this flavor going, we need something very good to go with. So we're going to stay in the forest. We're going to have forest mushroom here, pan-fried, and I'm going to make also a chestnut Puree, I hope you're ready to cook because I am, so let's strap the belt on and let's go! The recipe of the day is the roux deer roast with the Grand Veneur sauce, a very classic, very uh, ancient recipe, a gamey recipe, but it's a bit of an elaborate recipe, so let me tell you that before you can make that recipe, there is some prerequisite. The deer meat has to be marinated the day before, in red wine, so at least for 12 hours, in a concoction of spices, vinegar, and red wine. And you need to have the meat ready, pre-marinated, and you need to have the marinade as well. You also need to have a liter of stock, uh, freshly made beef stock, and the rest is just all the ingredients you're gonna be using. There's not too much mise en place to make, and we're gonna do this on the spot. We're gonna cook the mushrooms and make the chestnut. Chestnuts are ready, and we're gonna have to slice this piece of uh, pork belly here, but for the rest it's pretty, Straightforward. If you followed my course on Get Started with French Cooking, you will find information on the marinades and the stock in the course, on the sauces and marinades. And for you guys on YouTube, I'll try to find a, a few links that I've got uh, on some older videos that you can refer to. But that's it for the mise en place when you're all ready. Get to your pans and we'll start making the sauce. Now, like I said, the sauce in this recipe is the most important thing. Uh, and it is the one thing you need to do at the very beginning. And we need to start by making the sauce. And we've got all we need to actually to make the sauce. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our red wine marinade and take all of the garnish out like this and separate it. We're gonna separate the liquid from the garnish because we're gonna be reusing some of the garnish to make our sauce. So you got the idea, huh? you filter everything like this, as much as you can, and then you're gonna pass the whole liquid through a sieve into another container, so we can then reduce it. I'm gonna put this in a small pan. The stock here, you're gonna bring it to the boil and start to reduce it heavily. I've got one liter, the goal is to reduce it by half. That's the step number one. All right, so here we are. Uh, this is what I've got. So what we're doing in that first stage we're going to be concentrating the flavor. And as you can see, it's a very dark business going on here. You got that very dark marinade, like the, this is the garnish from the marinade. This is the stock. Look, it's very brown and, and it's going to become thicker and thicker. And this is the marinade that you also have to bring to the boil and start to reduce. It's all about really getting these concentrated flavors before we can even start the sauce. So like I said, we're going to bring this from one liter to about you know, maybe half a liter, a bit more, which is about two cups. And when that's done, then we're gonna be ready to start our sauce. Now my marinade has been brought to the boil, I'll turn the heat off, and now the stock has been reduced already for a good 10 minutes. But as you can see here, it's very liquid. Yeah? And this recipe calls for what we call a fond brun lié, a binded stock. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna add about a good tablespoon of beurre manier, an equal amount of uh, flour and butter mixed together and that is a thickening agent okay and that's going to transform our stock to not only the color of our stock but the consistency of our stock 
to make it that little bit thicker before we can really start the sauce. Uh, so you put the bourmagne in, mix well, and you bring back to the boil again. My stock is now ready, has been thickened a little bit, and we're ready to start the sauce. So I'm using here a sauté pan, and I'll explain one in a bit. And because it's got that large surface here, it's going to be able to reduce very quickly. So the first thing we're going to do is a bit of butter. There's about 30 grams of pork belly. And we're just going to cook this for about one or two minutes before we add the rest of the ingredients. Now this is happening on medium heat. And when we've got all of this in, I'm going to add this is the garnish from my marinade. So you could have fresh garnish, but because I've had this in my marinade, and it's gorged with flavors, uh, I've got all the uh, juniper berries, the cloves, all the spices, it's perfect to start my sauce. Then, I put a bit, of, a bit of thyme, a bay leaf, and a teaspoon of coarse peppercorn. You can also crush your own peppercorn if you want works as well. Now interestingly this sauce used to be made also with an Espanol base but because I just have a brown snack what I'm gonna do here is add a little bit of tomato paste in and cook it with the marinade to add that little intonation of tomato but just a tiny bit. Alright so now when we've got this we need to make a gastric and this is made with vinegar And we're going to put some of the marinade, and look at these colors. You see this kind of reddish color? This is during the old days. And then we're going to add some of the marinade. The small glass. And what we're going to do here is to basically reduce all of this acidity, and the vinegar, the red wine, etc., etc., all of these flavors in there. You see that soup? And transform this in an almost dry state and huh? we're going to make what we call the gastric and this is a hyper concentrated acidic base before we can add the stock in. Hold on and look at this beautiful uh, mix I've got here. Uh, it's fixed, it's reduced almost dry and we're ready now to add our stock in. So about two cups. It's hot. Yes. The stock is now in and the last step here is to cook that sauce for a good 15-20 minutes on low heat. And the sauce you have in front of you here is actually called a sauce poivrade, huh? which is a red wine base, acidic kind of pepper sauce huh? with a, a brown sauce that's gonna have to be reduced and it's very coarse and very strong in flavor. And it is not the final sauce. We talked about the sauce Grand Veneur and the Grand Veneur is again a variation of that of that sauce because we're going to be added other ingredients afterward to sweeten the sauce slightly. Now the sauce is cooking and we've got a good 15-20 minutes so it's a good time to make the chestnut puree very simple a nudge of butter a tablespoon and I'm using this uh, chestnut uh, from a jar already pre-cooked very handy and you can find them in France especially on Christmas time. And so all of the chestnut in in a bit of butter a real medium low kind of heat and we're just going to warm them up before we can crush them a little bit. My chestnuts are now warm. I can break them with the spoon and I'm going to use, you can use a potato ricer and we'll press puree but I'm going to use one of these manual tools and try to you know press down everything and make it a bit of a puree. Once you've got your puree chestnut and we're going to be adding some some cream about 200 ml so a little bit of a time I'm going to warm up that mix and make sure we don't overdo the cream and let it absorb with the chestnut and then we can press it again. I'm going to use my hand to press and to press this further to retransform this into puree. And as you can see, it starts to reabsorb all of the cream huh? and this is what's going to make our puree. When your puree has got the right consistency that you want, you can have it more or less liquid. Mine is a bit chunky because my uh, potato press is not great. And it's just a matter of seasoning. So salt and pepper, and that's it. I'm going to cook it very, very gently. And finally, we're now going to be ready to start our meat. Now, just before you start your meat, you need to make sure you've got your sauce ready. And we've got the puree of chestnut that's ready. And because the rest is going to go very fast. So my sauce here, my sauce poivre is done. I'm going to pass it through a sieve and reserve it into a small pan. And look how thick that is. 
it's just a beautiful. And now for the meat. Now my uh, roux deer uh, roast is here. And what I've done is that I've really pat it dry with some uh, paper towel. So as you can see, there's no juice. Huh? It's really, if I roll it in the plate, you can see it doesn't leave any, any marks. And this is very important because we want to have some coloring on it. So in a plate like this, salt and pepper, and then I'm gonna start coloring it in the pan. Now to cook the meat, nothing fancy really, just a little bit of oil, and I'm gonna color my meat. So medium to high heat, not too high, but I want to get some coloring on all sides. So I'm gonna leave it here for two or three minutes, let it color, and then turn it, turn it around in the pan. All right, so let's turn it. Let's turn it the other way. So of course it's hard to see the coloring. You can see this, this little brown everywhere. So the whole goal here is to brown the meat all over and we're going to finish it in the oven. Now just before I'm putting my roast in the oven, I've added my leftover uh, from the marinade, the vegetables that I had, because you see there was some slightly burned, it's going to add as a little protection. And I'm going to place this in the oven for 15 minutes, it can go up to 20 minutes, but it has to be served pretty pink, this type of meat. So 180 degrees Celsius, I'll put the equivalent on Fahrenheit on the screen. And when it's cooked, well, we'll see the results. Finally, the final touch, when your meat is in the oven, mushrooms. Now for the mushroom, when you cook them, salt, pepper, butter, high heat, and you want the heat to be high enough so that it kind of evaporates the uh, vegetation water of the mushrooms as soon as it's kind of extracted. So you don't want to have some kind of soup in your mushrooms. Huh? They need to be kind of dried at all time and shake them around like that until they are nice and brown. And that's it. My meat is now out of the oven. I'm gonna put it on a tray and let it uh, rest on the side while we finish the sauce. Now, the sauce. So at this moment in time, we've got a sauce poivrade, and which is a dark kind of red wine base, very peppery and slightly acidic type of sauce. And to finish it off, we need to add some more pepper, correct the seasoning with a bit of salt as well. Okay. And we now need to transform this into the sauce Grand Veneur. And to do this, we need to add some ingredients. Now, some recipe says you get two options. And the main ingredient is a good, generous, heaped teaspoon of, uh, I think it's cranberry jelly, grosé in French, I'm not sure if it's cranberry. And that we're gonna blend in, as that's gonna add some sweetness to the sauce. You can also add some cream into it. I am not convinced that cream is gonna really, is gonna again give that creamy taste, and I want to keep this that kind of old fashioned style that's really dark color with the meat. So I am not gonna put cream, but I'll put the details uh, in the video description for the amounts of cream you, you, know, you can have. But that's it for the sauce. If you look at it, I'm gonna try it. It's almost the same, just now it's gonna have a new intonation, new flavor into it with that little uh, jelly in. Wow, that's super interesting. <laughs> that is, wow. Well, let me take this other spoon. I think I'll add a little bit more of the... Wow, it's a really great combination. I I'm surprised. I didn't expect that uh, groseille and you know, this red fruit to add uh, with the pepper like that. And the red wine. Mmm. It's like peppery, coarse. You know, it's like really... I like the, the black pepper intonation with the red fruit. Super interesting. So, last thing to do, guys. Well, let's play it up. Now, moment of truth, everyone. Um, should we go that side? Uh, because I've never had these types of meat, and oh no, it's good. Oh, look at that. This is the color. It's beautiful. It's kind of a roast beef. Looks perfect. Okay, we're on. Let's plate. Okay, so what I'll do. I'll start with. Um, a food stacker here and I took the chestnut puree and I put some in because I don't want it to have like uh, this terrible look <laughs> so to have some kind of order on the plate uh, because we never know okay I rearrange everything and uh, I'm just gonna add a few uh, slices of meat here I think more on the side like that all right well not the best effort here um, but this is my little <laughs> Christmas plate and for the sauce I'm not too sure uh, where I should put it? So I sprinkle it a little bit. And I do some sprinkles on the meat because um, I don't want to drench the whole plate. In. Now, most important for me is to finally be able to 
taste the meat here with the sauce. And that's the first thing. Surprisingly, it is not that gamey at all. And the, um, the slight acidity of the sauce really cuts through uh, that gaminess. I'm gonna try some mushrooms with some chestnut puree, by the way, it's hidden here. Okay. Mm. Oh, the puree is beautiful. Honestly, it goes very, very well. Okay, another little piece here with the sauce. Okay, verdict. Honestly, the roux deer is very refined. It's not that gamey at all. I thought it was gonna be much stronger. But the, the sauce grand veneur with that acidity and that slight a fruit, a fruitiness into the sauce is an absolute welcome addition. And the chestnut puree, it's really nice because it's kind of really a bit starchy, a bit thick. So when you have that acidity, it also complements very well with the mushroom. Oh, you know, a great dish. Wow, what an experience we've done it. Huh? The famous uh, venaison, the roux deer roast with the sauce Grand Veneur. Huh? That's kind of sweet and sour uh, sauce with this uh, red fruit. It's absolutely amazing. If you try that recipe at home, let me know what you think. Use the comment section, send me some pictures on Instagram. Uh, hashtag French Cook Academy. But that's it for me, you guys. This is the last recipe of the year. I'll be back on the air. Um, you know, I believe in uh, February, beginning of February, with more recipe for you. Until then, I hope you have a great holiday, great times, and uh, have fun, and I see you all next year. Take care all. Thank you.